Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live. Um, tonight we're going to be drawing a rose. And what is Getting Sketchy? Well, Getting Sketchy is clearly live, but it's where we try to create a sketch in a short period of time. In fact, we try to create a sketch within 30 minutes. Now, I need to tell you right from the start that if you're trying to create a representational, realistic drawing, you can't expect to create a representational, realistic drawing in 30 minutes. What we're doing here tonight is designed for practice. It's designed to help you get better at drawing, get faster at drawing. And the same skills that we develop through sketching are the same skills that we use to create more developed, more finished drawings. So it's a great way to practice and hone your skills. We're still gonna create a drawing that's perfectly acceptable, except we're just not gonna spend all the time that we might have spent on developing the details. Now, uh, normally I get my timer set up before I go live, and I realized tonight that I didn't get the timer set up. So if you'll be patient with me for just a second, I need to set up the timer and let's see how fast I can do this. It's, it's probably gonna take me a second to do this, but let's, let's just see how quickly I can get it set up here live um, tonight. That will give some folks some time to get here, I bet. And uh, you probably got the message that we're live and uh, you're probably now just coming to the chat box. So hello to, uh, to the people who are in the chat box and the people who are watching this. So there's only a couple folks in there. So by setting up the, ch the timer, um, it's not that big of a deal here. Um, so I've got the timer up. We can switch it when we switch over to the main camera. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drawing a rose. There is a photo reference that I'm going to have up here on the screen in just a minute. I'm going to be using 2B graphite. This is a mechanical graphite pencil, but I'm going to be using 2B graphite inside of it. Very simple, very straightforward, and I'm going to be using a kneaded eraser. The photo reference that I'm working from is from a site called pixabay.com, which is a wonderful site for free resources, uh, free photo references. Um, you can create an account there. It's free to do so. Um, I did alter the photo a little bit um, just to make it a little bit easier to draw. I took the color out and cropped it a little bit, made it a little bit larger as well. So let's go ahead and switch over to the main camera and get into this, uh, this live challenge here. So you can see here in the bottom corner the photo reference. And let's see if we can bring up the timer. Let's see if that's possible here. That is not the timer. <laughs> Let's try this one. And is it up there? It is. There we go. So that wasn't too bad. I can move it into place here. Um, a little bit of a delay uh, that we normally don't have. So anyway, I'm just working on regular old 70 pound drawing paper here uh, in a sketchbook, if I can get it to focus in, there we go. Um, so again, our photo reference is down here in the corner and don't worry about the fact that it's already down to 28 minutes and five seconds because I'm gonna reset the timer when we're ready to go. We may not get this in in uh, 30 minutes. And if we don't get it in in 30 minutes, it's okay. At least we've got a good starting point, but we're gonna make a solid attempt at getting this drawing completed in 30 minutes. Now, this is the photo reference here, a little bit larger than what you guys have got. Basically, the approach I'm gonna to take to this is I'm gonna look at the overall shape here of the outer contour of the flower. That's what I'm gonna draw first. Then I'm gonna look at this basic shape on the inside, this kind of cone form right here. That's what I'm gonna draw second. And then from there, I'm gonna start carving out each one of the individual petals. At least that's the plan here, okay? Um, this approach is a little bit different from how some people naturally start drawing. Sometimes people naturally start drawing the contours or the outlines, and that can be frustrating for some folks because um, you might start a line and when you get back to where you started, things don't match up, or you might get some distortion in your drawing because of the, that approach. And that's not something that you want, of course. So if we start with basic larger shapes <coughs> and then go in and start defining the contours, it's a little bit easier to get some better accuracy with your drawing. Now, I forgot right at the beginning here that uh, this is live on YouTube. Uh, getting sketchy is, but each week as part of our membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com, we do live lessons, which are each an hour long, and uh, we go into great detail on mediums and um, subject matter, and we complete 
finished drawings when we do that. So this is just a sketch, but if you wanna learn more about our membership program, which includes video courses, weekly live lessons, weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers, and much, much more, it is re there's really nothing like it. Uh, there is a link below this video. You can click on it and head over there after the broadcast. All right, so uh, let's get started. Is everybody ready? So we're gonna start with a basic shape, a couple of basic shapes, then we're gonna go in and define the contours, and then from there, we'll add a bit of shading quickly at the end, and hopefully we can get this one completed in 30 minutes. If we don't, that's okay. Uh, we'll go until we've got it to at least a state of relative completion. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer, or restart the timer here, and uh, we'll get started. All right, so again, the first thing we're gonna do here is just basically define the overall shape. So. We don't have to draw basically uh, with rounded lines either. Even though the edges of the petals are rounded, we can kind of straighten things out a little bit and make more straighter lines like you see here. I'm just trying to find the outer shape of the rows. And that might seem like a weird shape here. Very loose and light. And I'm not gonna worry about all these extra lines that I'm drawing here. Once we start getting darker with the applications, they might not even be visible. And if they are visible, then it's no big deal. We can uh, lift them up a little bit with a needed eraser. All right, next I'm gonna go ahead and look at that cone shape that I mentioned that we'd be looking for here in the middle part of the rose. And you know, a lot of people think a rose is really difficult to draw and there really isn't, there really are, well, there's things that are more difficult to draw. I'm not going to say that, but <laughs> really drawing, it doesn't matter what you're drawing, the process is still pretty much the same. You know, it's a process of observation. Right now we're trying to break down the rows into basic shapes. And then from there, we're going to draw the contour lines. Either way, look at it, we're working with the elements and the elements of art, and uh, right now we're working with shape and line. All right, so there's that little petal that cuts right across here. There's the top part of the petal. Again, just making more angular marks here. And then we've got another petal that comes up and over and back down, and I usually have out what I am working on right now for the current live lesson series, again, part of our membership program. I've got it down the side, man. At the end of the broadcast, I will share with you what we're doing right now, because it does involve a flower to a certain degree, and uh, I'll show you where we are in the process. Right now, we're doing a series uh, on drawing with pastels. So again, just trying to figure out all the shapes out that I see. Just basic overview type shapes here. I'm not worried about all of the individual details. And in fact, if the details that we end up drawing here are a little bit different than what is observed in the reference, that's no big deal because we're creating a drawing here. And uh, we don't want necessarily our drawing to look exactly like the photo reference all the time. Sometimes we do, but a lot of times we we want our drawing to be a drawing. That's one of the things that we, or I personally find attractive about drawings and paintings uh, is the fact that it's created by a person and uh, you can see, you can see the way the artist saw the, that particular subject in the way that they interpreted that particular subject. So uh, we wanna make sure that we preserve that, even in this simplified sketch here. I'm not gonna go too simplified, but it's, remember, a quick sketch. And again, if you missed it here at the, at the beginning, uh, this is just for exercise and practice. Uh, if you're trying to create finished drawings and paintings, they require more time than 30 minutes, of course. And uh, I should always point that out because I think uh, now, nowadays we, we live in a time period where everybody thinks that things should be done quickly. 
And art is one of those things that is just not one of those things that you can you could bust out something in just a couple of minutes and expect it to be super high quality. It's one of those things that takes time. And there's nothing wrong with that. The best things in life that you're most proud of, your most worthwhile accomplishments, are usually the things that take time. So you can see now we're working our way into the middle of the row. So we start with that, that big open shape here and then that cone shape. And then I just started trying to look at the overall shapes of the petals around here. And then we're just kind of working our way inward. We'll go back and define some of these petals in a minute uh, once we kind of kind of got the basic overview of the rows in place. Anyway, a lot of people think drawing a rose is hard, and I was going to say that uh, there aren't hard subjects, but that's not really true. There are hard subjects. There are subjects that are more challenging than other subjects, and um, some of those subjects, it's just a matter of understanding the object to make it a little bit easier. And one of those, uh, the example I'm thinking of right now is drawing a hand. A lot of times people think drawing a hand is is pretty hard, but when you know the basic shapes that make up a hand, it becomes really, really easy, actually. Um, but the problem is a lot of people just don't know that kind of stuff. But I have a video on YouTube about that, so you can look that up. But there are other subjects that are definitely more difficult and more challenging. One of those subjects, of course, is the human figure. The human figure is one of the most challenging subjects to draw because it's very dynamic. If you think about it, we can't really, you know, everybody's body type is different. So we've got that variable going on. And the body is always capable of moving and being in a different position. And because of that, it's hard to, to basically pinpoint a formula for drawing the figure. And that's why many times in most art programs, you're required to take several years of figure drawing. I had to take, you think are difficult, the better your drawing is going to get. Um, and the quicker you're going to uh, get better at drawing as well. Are you starting to see the rows develop here a little bit? Let's zoom in a little bit closer. I think I've got a little bit of extra space here. So there we go. Again, we just started with the basic overall shapes, and now we're going in and defining the contour lines. Contour lines are basically a contour line is just another name for an outline. So we're defining the outlines now, and now that we're defining the outlines, we can uh, start concentrating on some of those curves and things that happen there. Um, around the edges of the petal. And you'll also notice that I'm getting a little bit darker with my applications, although I should point out that uh, we're drawing this quickly as a sketch, of course, but the outer edge of many of these petals is actually a very light line. Funny thing about line is we see lines because basically a contrast in value. Value is the darkness or lightness of a color. Of course, it's very important. Uh, in any form of art that you're making, whether it's drawing or painting or whatever medium that you're using, value is exceptionally important because it's how we see and understand the world around us. But we see a contrast in value and then we simplify that into a line a lot of times when we're creating a drawing. But if you want to create a representational or a realistic drawing of your subject, you need to pay special attention to the values that you see. So instead of drawing lines like we are here, this sounds very counterintuitive. <laughs> the fact that I'm drawing lines and I'm telling you not to draw lines might seem a little bit strange, but if you're creating a more realistic drawing, then you need to think about those shapes of value and the contrast between those values. And if you get the value right, and you get the values in the right place and have a full range of value in your drawings, then you're going to end up with a drawing or painting that looks representational because that's how we see things in the world around us. We see a contrast of value. We see darks and lights and the grays in between. 
So I mentioned that I had changed this photo a little bit. One of the ways that I changed the photo, of course, was to take the color out so that we only are concentrating on the values. Since we're using a black and white medium here, clearly. Slowly the rows are starting to come together. It's not as hard as it looks, right? Just shapes. And then once we've got those basic shapes in place, going back and defining the contour lines, and in just a moment we'll start developing some of the value. We're going to do it quickly and loosely because of our, our time constraint that we've placed on ourselves. But, you know, if this was a drawing that I was planning on finishing to a, a higher level of realism, I would start it the same way. The same thing that I'm doing right here. I'd be drawing quickly and loosely. And here's a great example. Well, I'm just going to bring this up a little bit higher here. I was going to say, here's a great example of how the, the reference and the drawing can be different, and it's okay. And the reference, um, this part actually comes out a little bit further, and this comes up a little bit higher, but that's not going to be an issue because nobody's going to see your reference photo unless you show it to them, of course, which... <laughs> I don't know why anybody would do that, but uh, remember the whole point is to create a piece of artwork, not to show how well you copied a photo. If you want to get good at copying photos, you can definitely do that, but you might need to change your name to something like Xerox or something like that. <laughs> so people know you're a copy machine. You should always let yourself come through in the drawings and paintings that you create. It should be yours. All right, so we'll draw a little bit of an indication of the stem. I'm not going to go too crazy with it. All right, so at this point, uh, we basically got all of the lines in place, as far as I can tell. But you might notice that this does not look like a three-dimensional rose yet. And that's because we haven't added the value, as I mentioned before. So we're going to quickly and loosely start adding the value to create uh, the impression and illusion of form. There is one more petal that we need to add up here. So we'll add it here. I also lightened this image a little bit. Uh, the red of the rose in the color image was a little bit, um, it was the same value as the background. And because it was the same value as the background, you couldn't really see, see the rose very clearly when we took the color out. So, all right, I'm just taking a kneaded eraser and just quickly cleaning up some of these looser lines. Not going to clean up all of them but I'm just going to quickly and loosely get rid of some of these lines here. And the great thing about the kneaded eraser is if you're concerned about it, um, if you're concerned about the eraser changing the texture of the surface, a kneaded eraser, you can just dab the surface and it makes the value lighter. You see that? It lifts the graphite from the surface without changing the texture. And you know, if you take a, uh, a rubber eraser or a pink pearl eraser or something like that and try to erase with it, it can change the texture of your drawing. And sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want to just make the line a little bit lighter without causing any changes in the texture. In fact, most of the time you want to just make it lighter without changing the texture. All right, I'm going to give my pencil a quick sharpen here. And we've got 16 minutes. I always feel so confident at this point that we've got plenty of time. But we're about, <laughs> we're about halfway through. Uh, yes, I'm using a 2B pencil. Uh, see that comment there. All right, so uh, let's start here in the middle, and I'm just going to start with a heavier application here. I'm going to try to get some of these light lines that are happening around the edges of parts of these petals. And I'm going to, I'm going to add this value as quickly as I possibly can. Um, I'm going back and forth between the photo reference and my drawing. So I just don't think because my pencil doesn't seem to stop moving that I am not looking at the reference because I am. I'm just turning my head back and forth. I'm getting 
We looked at the reference, of course, when we drew the shapes and the contour lines, and now what I'm doing is I'm getting the information about the values. And you'll notice most of the marks that I'm going to be making here, might be hard to see at this point, but it won't be in a minute, I'm going to make them so that they flow over what's called the cross contours of each section. Now the cross contours are, sometimes they're visible lines, but a lot of times they're kind of in imaginary lines that flow over the form of the subject. You can imagine taking your finger and running it over the petals. If you were to take your fingers and run them up the petals, um, and you can imagine making lines, your, your finger would change directions depending on the petal, depending on how the petal turns in space. And that's basically what a cross contour line is. So we can add shading and value based on the, the direction of the cross contour lines. So that will help us create the illusion of form along with the, the value. The value, of course, is going to help create the illusion of form as well. But by making directional strokes that flow along the form of each one of these petals, we can also help to create that illusion. And as we work our way out, we're going to notice that a lot of the values get a little bit lighter. The overall value gets a little bit lighter. Most of the darker values exist close to the center. There's still dark values, light values, and a range of grays, but they start to get a little bit lighter as we work our way out because there's just more opportunities for things to fold over each other right in here as we get close to the inside portion of the flower here. And again, I'm, I'm adding this value very, very quickly. This is the point where if this was a more finished drawing, I would slow down and I would really take my time adding the value. I'm not going to blend with my finger or with a blending stump here. I'm just going to adjust the pressure that I place on the pencil to adjust the value that I'm creating. And I'm still going to allow some of these lines to be loose and sketchy. Remember, even though this is a sketch, we're still using the same mental muscles, if you will, will, that we would if we were creating a more finished drawing. So even though we're working quickly, we still have the benefit of getting better at our drawing skill by working under a time constraint like we are here. If you really want to see improvement in your drawing, I would suggest that you draw every day for at least 30 minutes to an hour. And it should be directed practice. Uh, in other words, you should have a goal in mind when you sit down to draw. It shouldn't be just aimless doodling or um, drawing letters and or numbers if people draw numbers. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. It's fine to draw from imagination from time to time, but if you really want to see your drawing skills improve, and if you want to get better at drawing from imagination, then the best thing to do is to draw from observation. And I know that might seem strange, uh, especially to folks who don't understand what I'm saying, but the people who draw well from imagination are the ones who have a lot of practice drawing from observation. And it's because they're drawing from memory. They're not really drawing from imagination. They've, they've drawn a particular subject so many times or had so much experience drawing things from observation that when they draw things from imagination, they can make better decisions about how to handle certain things, where to put the light, how the light's going to behave where the cast shadow is going to be, where the core shadow is going to be, what shape is this going to be, and so on. So if that's where you want to get better, if you want to be one of those folks who can draw really great things from imagination, then the secret is to practice drawing from observation. But if you practice every day with some direction, meaning let's say you want to get better at drawing textures, capturing textures in a drawing, then spend 30 minutes to an hour every day 
drawing textures that you think are really, really challenging. And keep in mind that it's okay to make mistakes and not be perfect. That's part of the process of being an artist and learning how to draw is making mistakes. But if you don't practice or don't do certain things or avoid certain subject matter because you're afraid of failure, then you'll never get any better. That's why I'm talking about failure <laughs> here. Um, so don't be afraid of doing things that are tough and challenging because that's really where the growth happens. And a lot of times you'll see that over time, the things that you are that you think are so difficult to draw really aren't that difficult anymore. <laughs> it's funny how that happens. You can really see here how I'm going with the cross contour lines here. So you can see I'm bending my arm as I'm working my way around um, the flower. And you can see how the directional strokes that I'm making here are making the illusion of the form of the petal a little bit more believable along with the value. If I would have just haphazardly started going in different directions up there, I'd develop the value, but I would do very little to help create the illusion of form with my directional stroking. So the concept of cross contour lines um, can be applied and should be applied to any medium that you're using. You know, if you're using paint, it, it can help you determine the directional strokes that you make with the paint. Because your brush strokes are important too. Now the value on this particular petal is very light. I'm still making some directional strokes here. You can see that it's very light though. Because we want it to contrast with the darker values behind it. We can kind of accentuate that outline a little bit, but we don't want to outline too much there. And then the value's a little bit darker here. And we've got eight minutes left. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I told you, I always get so confident. In fact, I think the last few times I've broadcast the getting sketchy here, um, I don't think I've made it in time. And you know what? I'm thinking I'm not gonna make it in 30 minutes again. <laughs> I should just change it to 45 minutes. No, that, that doesn't sound as good. That doesn't work as, as well, I don't think. <laughs> but again, if you, if you read the, if you come over to the blog after, uh, after watching these, then you know that I, I make a comment um, each time I go over about the fact that a lot of times it doesn't matter if we make the time constraint that we place on ourselves. The important part is that by placing the time constraint, we know that there's a beginning and an end somewhere in our mind. So it encourages us to, to actually get started a lot of times. So if you tell yourself, well, I'm going to only spend 30 minutes on this drawing, or I can do this drawing in 30 minutes, or I'm going to make a challenge for myself to draw this drawing in 30 minutes, then you'll actually get started. And then once you're in the drawing, you have a really good chance of finishing. So even though we might not finish this one in 30 minutes, it might take a little bit longer. It's not gonna to take too much longer though. We still have the benefit of getting started. And when we start something, we usually finish it. Just a lot of times people don't start things. <laughs> Even things that they'd love to do and uh, they'd love to be really good at, they just don't start. They just, you know, I know we're on YouTube here. And um, I know, but but a lot of people sometimes get on YouTube and just, just watch video after video and they say, oh, that looks interesting. I'll do that tomorrow. I'll... Do that the day after tomorrow. I'll do that on Sunday. <laughs> and what happens is they never do it. And they just get inspired, but there's no action that follows that inspiration. And there's got to be action. 
And by the way, if you're looking for directed practice and you want to learn how to get better at drawing, um, just finished a brand new course called 25 Days to Better Drawings. And it is literally meant for you to go through in the course of 25 days. And each drawing exercise that's included is meant to be completed within an hour. And um, each day is a new concept, a new drawing concept. And that's part of the membership program. So if you, if you become a member, you get access to all of the courses that we offer at thevirtualinstructor.com. But that is our newest course. And it's, it's, it's pretty extensive. Um, and it's meant to help you get better at drawing. But it's meant for serious people because the course itself is over 10 hours long. But again, you don't take it all in one, one day. <laughs> you take it over 25 days. But if you're not serious, you shouldn't look into it. If you're not serious about improving your art. Doesn't mean you have to be serious about being an artist. Just have to be serious about your art. All right, so you can see we're creating some gradations of tone and value. And I'm doing this again, all with just the pressure that I'm placing on the pencil. So many times people think that you have to have some kind of uh, smoother transition of, of value and tone in a drawing. And sometimes that is good and that you should. When I've got gradation and slow changes in tone and value. But uh, sometimes the texture of the paper can distract people um, and they want to get rid of that texture of the paper. And that's fun sometimes too, but sometimes it's okay just to let the texture of the paper be a part of the drawing. Sometimes the texture of the paper is attractive as well. And this is 70 pound drawing paper as I mentioned before. If you want to have a real smooth transition without having to use a blending stump, you might try using a paper uh, like Bristol paper. There's the vellum surface, which has a little bit of tooth associated with it, but it's still relatively smooth. Actually, I'm gonna start working up here on these petals next since I'm right-handed, and we're getting to that point where the palm of my hand could get in the way and start smearing the graphite. But there's also the Bristol paper um, that is smooth. Now the vellum surface is very smooth too, but the smooth surface is super smooth. And I really prefer the, the vellum surface for graphite drawing, if we're talking about Bristol paper, and the smooth surface for pen and ink drawing. But you can definitely use either one of those surfaces to get smooth transitions and smooth changes of value. But there's also another type of paper called, of course there are another type of paper, but <laughs> there's another type of paper that I like to work with, with graph graphite drawing, and it's called charcoal paper. And a lot of times people have, I've even had uh, students of mine say, you know, well, it's charcoal paper. Why are you using graphite on it? Well, <laughs> you can use all kinds of drawing and painting materials on watercolor paper. It's not just for watercolor, although it's called watercolor paper. The same thing's true for charcoal paper. Charcoal paper has a laid pattern, so it's kind of a series of squares that are kind of raised up, and it produces a really nice texture that's especially great for creating the illusion of trees and bushes and things like that. And back when I used to do commissioned house portraits all the time, I would use charcoal paper to create those. And it really was a great surface for creating those illusions of trees and bushes and things. Because a lot of times you'd have trees and bushes in a house portrait. All right, so it's very clear now, now that we have one minute and 17 seconds, that I will not be finishing this in 30 minutes. <laughs> but I'm getting closer and I don't think it's going to be too much longer. I think it's going to be about 38 minutes. How's that? Um, so that's not too bad. But again, it goes, I'm, I'm drawing super quick here too. Very, very fast. And even though I'm drawing very, very fast, we're starting to get the form of the rose happening here. 
even in a short period of time. Now I'm going to make this edge just a little bit darker so that we've got a little bit more differentiation between the petal that I'm going to be addressing here, which is much, much lighter in value. So I'm going to still try to use those directional strokes. If you, We can really see those uh, the veins in the, flat, in the petals here on this particular flower, or on this particular petal. And this is a good, good way of seeing and understanding cross contour lines because these petals are kind of going, or these veins are kind of going out this direction right now. But as we work our way around, they're going to start to turn down. Like right here, they're kind of going down like this. And then right here, they're kind of coming up and curving over like this. Can you see that? And that is the concept of cross contour lines. And that's how we should make decisions regarding the directional strokes we make with a drawing medium, like in this case graphite, or a painting medium with our brush stroking. And of course that's not always the case. If we're working with like watercolor or something like that and you want to cover a big broad area, you don't have to necessarily make these tiny directional strokes here. But if we were using acrylic, for example, we might make the brush, we might paint this area in a solid color and then go back and start working the values by using directional stroking. That flows along the cross contours of the form of the petal. Now in areas in this particular sketch, I'm going back and enhancing some of the, the, the lines around the edges. That's just to create additional contrast. And I'm doing it just because this is a sketch. If this was a finished drawing, I wouldn't need to do that because I would be developing the values to the full extent of the way that I see them. But since we're doing this very quickly, we can use line to help create a little bit of a stronger edge in areas where needed. We see that a lot in quick sketches or pen and ink drawings. Especially in pen and ink drawings where we can enhance the line quality, create some lines that are a little bit thicker in areas to help create the illusion of form. I am still trying to make sure that I get a little bit of variety in the value, even though the value is lighter here. So we'll have some darker areas and some, some slightly darker areas, I should say. All right, let's go ahead and get this one up here and then I'll drop back down here and finish that one off. Finish these petals off here. This top section is very, very light, this top petal, but I'm still going to add some graphite to it. I'm not going to leave it alone and let it be white because it's not white. It's a light gray, right? Okay, so let's go in here and start making some of these tones dark. These are some darker values, very, very dark values in here. But still, we have some of the veins from the petal, this particular petal, and that will help us see and understand the directional strokes we should make here. Even though this area is, is very, fairly solid, very, fairly solid dark, <laughs> fairly solidly dark, we still want to make sure that our directional stroking flows with the form. And as we work our way over, we can have a little bit of variance here. And I'm just using the pencil. As the pencil is getting a little bit duller, I'm kind of using more of the side of the, uh, the graphite here. the side of the lead, even though it's not really lead. We still call it that even, even though it's, even though we all know that this medium is graphite. 
And graphite comes in many different forms other than a pencil. There's graphite sticks. It's actually graphite chunks. <laughs> There's water soluble graphite. There's colored graphite. All different types of graphite. Although most of us, when we think of graphite, we think of a pencil. And like we're doing here. And I apologize to you guys in the chat box. I know that you guys are, are posting things. And if you've, if you've seen this little segment here on YouTube, then you know that I may address some things here at the end. But I'm really just trying to... I'm keeping my head down here. And uh, with our live lessons as part of the membership program, I do stop and answer questions because I'm not under a time constraint. But even though I'm, I guess I'm not under a time constraint anymore, right? <laughs> but I still want to get this finished in a timely manner. So uh, when the haters show up and, and start talking about, you did do it in 30 minutes. What a ripoff. But I think it's still a good lesson. You, can, you just can't, you can't create quality pieces of artwork in 30 minutes, but you can try. And this is, a, again, <clears throat> just a sketch here. Not meant to be a finished piece of artwork. This is for practice, and it's to teach you and to show you that drawing it does not have to be as hard as... <coughs> Excuse me, as some people like to try to make it out to be. It's not a miraculous talent that some people are fortunate to be born with and others aren't. It's a skill that anyone can learn and anyone can develop and anyone can get strong at it. I'll tell you a story if you don't believe me. There was a kid, uh, I don't remember his name, but I, I do remember it. My first first time I was in class in in art school, you know, you're in class there, you're you're kind of sizing other people up because you know art is competitive, like sports and things like that. You know, everybody wants to be the best, and that's a good thing. I think competition's good, but everybody wants to be the best, of course. So you go into that class the first day, and you're kind of sizing everybody up. You're looking at what they're doing. You're wondering, hey, am I going to be the best? Am I going to be the worst? Am I going to be somewhere in between? What are these guys going to be like? How good are they going to be? So I was no different. I was in there, you know, looking around, trying to decide if I was going to be the best or somewhere in the middle or, or whatever. Anyway, I remember this particular guy, um, and he was definitely not the best. <laughs> In fact, uh, he was down in the lower tier of the students in the class as far as, as his drawing skills go. And um, I remember it clearly. I remember even thinking, what is this guy doing here in art school? He has no business being in art school. Well, as, as time went on, every time I would go to the studio to work, he was there. He was somewhere in that building. Um, you know, you go around the corner, there he was. Um, you'd go there late at night, he was somewhere in the studio. Somewhere there. He was always there, always working, always drawing. Practicing, practicing, practicing. And by the time we graduated, he won the Most Outstanding Illustrator Award for the department. And he deserved it. He was, he was the best. His skills were unbelievable. But he started the program as one of the worst as far as skill level goes, and maybe even the worst. He was definitely lower tier. <laughs> but he worked hard. He practiced hard. He got better and better and better. It was something that he wanted. And he went out and got it. And that is a testament to all of those people out there, or that is an argument for all those people out there who say that you have to be born with talent 
to be good at drawing and painting. It's not the way it is. I've seen and I've had too many students who have walked in with a low level of skill and have walked out with a high level of skill. I've seen it over and over again. And if you're one of those people that make excuses for why you can't draw this or why you can't draw that or you wish you could draw, well, you can. You can. You can do all the things that you want to do when it comes to the art world if you're willing to invest some time, invest some effort, and really take it seriously. And I think... For some people, the first step is believing that you can and believing that you are going to be able to do this. And then once you start believing, the sky is really the limit. So this rose has this little lighter pocket of value here. So I'm going to just kind of hint at it. There's some things in a reference photo or when you're looking at a subject from life that if you drew it, it just might not translate the way that, it, that it's translating in a photo. It might just look weird. And in those circumstances, you just leave out that information or you figure out another solution. So I think that that little white spot right there might look a little weird, but if we keep it lighter in value, it kind of makes sense with the rest of the petals. So that's what I'm going to do there. But yeah, you have to believe that you can draw, and then you have to be willing to put in the time, the effort, and you have to seek out the knowledge that you need. Drawing and painting are skills, but they do require a certain set of knowledge and understanding. Um, we, you, you know, you've probably heard people say, draw what you see, just draw and paint what you see. And that sounds all fine and dandy if you know what to look for. But the problem is a lot of people don't know what to look for. And once you know what to look for and how to look for it, you start, to, you start seeing the world differently. And you start looking at everything around you and you start understanding how you could draw it if you were to draw it. when you start learning to understand or when you start seeing the world as an artist. But there are no limits. Other than the 30 minute time limit that we <laughs> we have butchered again. We'll put a little and now I'm adding details that I would have never added just because just because the timer is stuck on the perpetual second one second there's still a second left since there's still a second left i might can make it <laughs> all right so we'll add just a little bit of shadow here to the stem and our last petal and then we'll call this one the sketch complete we'll make it a little bit darker underneath underneath here so we got a little bit more of a differentiation there. And then we'll make it a little bit darker under here. And there we go. All right, so let's zoom out just a little bit so we can have the whole thing in there. All right, so if we look at the reference and I look at the drawing, you can clearly see there's some areas where we can go back in and really push the value even darker, right? You see all that? We're not gonna do it right now, but we could. And those are the kind of evaluations that you need to make throughout your own drawing. So anyway, we didn't get it done in 30 minutes, but you know what, that's not really a big surprise. We, st <laughs> we still got a pretty decent sketch of a rose done. Um, in a short period of time. I think it was probably about 40 minutes, maybe a little bit longer than that. But as I mentioned, I told you I was going to show you what we're working on right now for our live lesson series. So let me grab this and we'll slide the sketch out of the way. Right now we're working on a series of on pastels and we are drawing a butterfly, a flower, um, 
So this is kind of a larger drawing, and so far this is five live lessons. So we started by drawing uh, basically the light contours of everything with the charcoal pencil, and then we established the background, and we're in the process of developing the flower a petal at a time, and uh, we're using pastel pencils to develop the flower. So we're all excited on getting to the body of the butterfly, which should happen um, probably not tomorrow night, but the week after that. So the live lessons, we go very slowly. I explain every step of the process, um, and it's very, very detailed instruction. And we have a course library, or we have a uh, live lesson library. There are, uh, I can't remember exactly, maybe 200. There's 200 plus, maybe 250 plus uh, recorded live lessons. And then, of course, we have all of our courses and things that are all included as part of the membership program. So we're going to be continuing with the live lessons tomorrow night. Again, if you want to learn more about the program, there's a link below this, uh, this video here. All right. Let me go ahead and switch back over here to this camera and swing the mic out of the way. So thank you guys for sticking around. If you did, hopefully you drew alongside of me. Remember, the whole point of this is just to get better at drawing. Practice makes perfect, right? I think I saw somebody make that comment in the comments. So uh, the more that you practice, the better you're gonna get. But if you don't take the time to practice, even if it's 30-ish plus minutes, then you won't improve. So uh, you gotta spend that time practicing and uh, hopefully, you did it alongside of me tonight. Remember, it's stuff supposed to be fun anyway. So have fun when you create art. So with that, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and sign out for this evening. Thanks for being a part of this channel. And I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Good night, everybody.